I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. Psalm 138. Good morning. It's great to have you uh, with us today. Um, Today, our reading will be uh, from the Gospel of Luke. Um, Previously, we read from the Gospel of Mark, and we saw how Mark portrayed Jesus as a suffering servant. Well, in Luke's Gospel, he tells us that he carefully investigated everything because he wanted to write an orderly account of the ministry of Christ so that there would be certainty of that which was taught. So Luke, as a Gentile, portrays Jesus as the Savior of the lost. In one chapter, Jesus tells three parables about the lost, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. Rejoice with me, I have found my sheep. Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. My son was lost, but now is found. After Christ's interaction with the tax collector Zacchaeus, he says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So, as we look at our reading today, let's keep that in mind. Uh, today, our reading is Luke 17, 11 through 19. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time that you've given us to be together. Father, we ask that as we read your word, Lord, that you would bring us understanding. And Father, as you bring us understanding, Lord, that you would open our hearts that we might follow you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I will be reading to you from the English Standard Version. Um, Sometimes, probably most of the time, I read from the NIV. But today, there are a few um, uh, tweaks, so to speak, where we want to see the more literal translation. So we'll be reading from the English Standard Version. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went and were cleansed, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God. Well, this story of Jesus healing the ten lepers is probably familiar uh, to some of you. Um, The short story is that Jesus heals 10 lepers, but only one of the 10 returns to thank Jesus. So let's look at some more details of the story. Jesus is traveling towards Jerusalem. This is his last road trip. Um, when he arrives in in Jerusalem, they will welcome him. It'll be uh, what we recognize as Palm Sunday, and the people will praise him and and throw uh, their cloaks and palms down before him. 
But as Jesus enters this community, this community probably of just lepers, Jews and Gentiles, um, keep in mind that they would not have been allowed to interact with the community. They wouldn't be able to eat with their families or enjoy holidays together. Um, so uh, receiving healing from leprosy, that is um, having the priest declare them as clean, uh, would mean they would have their lives back. They would be able to gather with their families and their friends. It would be an amazing blessing, a miracle. So as Jesus enters this community, he's greeted by 10 lepers who stand at a distance and say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, the NIV uses the word pity. But the ESV, the English Standard Version that I read today, uses the word mercy, and mercy is a more accurate translation. Now you're probably wondering, well, what difference does it really make? Well, when we look up these two words, pity and mercy, we see that pity is a, a feeling of sorrow for the disadvantages that someone else has suffered. But mercy is a feeling of compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. So do you see the difference there? You know, I can have pity for someone and just feel badly for them. But if someone has shown mercy to me, they feel badly for me, but they're also in a position to punish me or inflict harm. So God's mercy basically means that when we deserve punishment, we know that the scripture says we're all sinners um, saved by grace. Uh, he done it, doesn't punish us, but he blesses us instead. Mercy is this withholding of just condemnation. So the lepers want more than Jesus' pity. They want Jesus to be merciful to them. They don't want Jesus to just feel badly for them. They want his blessing. So next we read, when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Well, we don't know the exact moment where they were cleansed. Um, uh, they started on their, to make their way to Jerusalem to the priest, and they were cleansed. But one of the men, when he realized he was healed, he came back with a loud voice. He praised God, and the scripture tells us that he fell at Jesus' feet. Now, this is important because it's more than just saying thank you. In falling at Jesus' feet, he's putting himself in this position of worship. He's thanking Jesus, but he's also doing it in an act of worship. If someone uh, gives us a gift, uh, we say thank you, we might write a thank you note, but uh, we probably don't fall at any of anyone's feet. Um, the action of this man is an admission of his face. faith. He isn't just saying, oh, thanks. Um, he's bowing down in worship to Jesus. Now, the scripture said, now he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, we're not ten cleansed. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Now, as a Samaritan, this man was an outcast. Um, he wasn't a Jew. Uh, we see Jesus here once again ministering to the lost um, because even when this Samaritan received his healing, he still will be an outcast. Uh, among the Jews. Now, this Greek word used here for foreigner uh, 
occurs only here in the New Testament. An inscription that warns Gentiles not to enter the temple proper uses the same word. The foreigner cannot enter the Jerusalem temple, but he can worship Jesus, the Son of God. As a foreigner or an outsider, he recognized something that others had totally missed. Now, um, I have to tell you that when uh, my husband came to faith in Jesus Christ, he recognized things that either I didn't notice or that I took advantage of. He didn't um, have God in a box. He didn't have a preconceived notion about what God could do or couldn't do or what God would do or wouldn't do. Um, he very much believed that with God, all things were possible. Now, I have a much more black and white personality. So, um, you know, of course, I felt that it was my job to point out certain rules of the faith. When, in essence, he could see God in a much broader way than I could. And that's kind of the way I see these lepers. The nine are those black and white personalities that are on their way to the priest in Jerusalem. So the priest, uh, according to Mosaic law, can declare that they're clean. And one, the outsider, can recognize that this is Jesus. He just wants to worship Jesus. And Jesus said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. His faith is not simply believing that Jesus can heal the sick, but recognizing Jesus' unique status and identity. The Samaritan recognized who Jesus was. And by coming to Jesus, that Samaritan receives something greater than physical healing. He was also saved from his sins. The Samaritan's nine friends were declared clean by the priest, but he was declared saved by the Son of God. And while it's wonderful to experience the miracle of physical healing, it's even more wonderful to experience the miracle of eternal salvation. So the question is, what does this mean to us? Well, simply, do we express our thanks to God for all that he has provided for us? Do we recognize our blessings? On a deeper level, are we thankful for God's mercy upon us? You know, we deserve the wrath of God for our sin, but he had mercy on us. He extended his grace to us, his unmerited favor, so that we might be in fellowship with him. I would pray that this week you would seek God to say thank you for his healing in your life, that you would ask him to show you uh, ways in which maybe he has touched you that perhaps you didn't recognize or you took for granted. Uh, so let's pray. Father, as we come to you today, we come to you humbly. Lord, we ask that as we seek you, you would give us just a glimpse of how you uh, were merciful to us. Father, we ask that you would continue to work in us and work on us. Lord, uh, help our eyes to be opened to those who need your love, Lord, so that we could share with them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May you be sent out in the power 
of the Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.